A. Okay. So they said vitamin B. Uh, okay, they said beta. Uh, uh, vitamin B two. Okay, it's in mm -hmm. my brain. B two hypovitaminosis is vitamin B two deficiency. You just need to know another name for vitamin B, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell me the the other name for vitamin B two? Riboflavin. Riboflavin, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's in the ans flavin enzymes. So this one will be what your keyword. Yeah. All right. Next question. Okay. It's not yet showing. Okay. A patient complains of photoreception disorder and frequent acute viral disease. He has been prescribed a vitamin that affects our photoreception processes by producing rhodopsin B photosynthetive pigment. What vitamin is it? Vitamin A. Yeah, it's vitamin A. But you need to know, like vitamin A, there are two forms which you need to remember. Re uh, retinal acetate is the one which is found in the rods, like okay. uh, phoscotopic fixin. Another one is called uh, transretinoic acid. Wait. Hello. Right. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hello. Are you there? I can't hear you. Few more. Yeah, Hello. My music is breaking. Hello. Yes. Yes. I can hear you. <gasps> Wait, let me put my data, not Wi-Fi. Uh, can you reduce my movements? Do you record a YouTube for video? Mm -hmm. for, uh, I'm recording um, mm -hmm. yeah. YouTube video. Hello? So we have my movement. You see. Okay, uh, let's proceed. Yeah, maybe you can start see. explaining so, how Tanga she could see my vitamin A, panimal, forms and funnels there, because I'm going to break. Oh, okay, exactly. So I said like in vitamin A, you need to remember two forms. The first one, mm -hmm. retinal acetate, right? Ret retinal acetate uh, is the one for what? For, for, um, for vision, right? For scotopic vision. And it's found in the what? In the rods, right? Mm -hmm. The other one I said is transretinoic acid. Transretinoic Trans acid. Trans what? Transretinoic acid. Trans, trans is in uh, like cis trans. Yeah. Retinol. Transretinoic acid. Okay, reti retinoic. Yes. Acid. Okay. Yeah, so that its function is like for for transcription, just to say for transcription. Okay, transcription. Right. So just to, like to rule out other question, uh, other answers like a tocopherol. is or uh, is vitamin E, and it's it's used like if a woman has problem uh, problems in conception, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what about pyridoxine? All right, pyridoxine is vitamin B6. Uh, it's usually used. Um, oh, it's, it's function. It functions like as the coenzyme in transaminases. Uh, is it and it's deficiency. B6. B6. Yeah, okay. pyridoxine is B6. Mm -hmm. And I said its, it's deficiency is usually caused by uh, uh, taking isoniazide, isoniazide, uh, a drug for tuberculosis, right? So every time you prescribe isoniazide, you need okay. to remember to give the patient uh, vitamin B6. Vitamin B6. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, cyanocobalamin, uh, this one is vitamin B12, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's deficient. Cause is uh, which kind of anemia? Megaloblastic anemia, oh, okay. uh, and then 
in most cases, its deficiency is caused by. Um, OK, so you need you need to remember the following things like f firstly, you need to know uh, intrinsic factor, right? Intrinsic factor is needed for absorption of vitamin B12. Intrinsic factor is synthesized by the parietal cells of the stomach, right? Mm -hmm. So if a patient is uh, like a gastritis or, or surgery, mm -hmm. like a gastric resection, those things can reduce what? Uh, can reduce the amount of uh, intrinsic factor, therefore uh, reducing absorption. Uh, another case is, you know, like uh, fish, right? Like caviar, mm -hmm. like ca caviar. I, I saw a question uh, because there is a parasite known as Diphylobotrum latum, right? What? So uh, that parasite, infection by that parasite can cause also the deficiency of uh, vitamin B12. Okay. Then the last one here is thiamine. Thiamine is vitamin B. Uh, thiamine is one of the coenzymes <laughs> of uh, pyruvate. Huh? Thiamine is a coenzyme for an enzyme known as uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The enzyme found mm -hmm. in the transition pathway, if you still remember, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you know, after glycolysis, we have pyruvate. Then py yeah. pyruvate is converted to acetyl core A. If there is oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. And that process occurs in the mitochondria, right? So the enzyme mm -hmm. called pyruvate dehydrogenase, it is like five core factors. I will tell you about them when we reach another question so that you can remember all of them. But uh, the deficiency of thiamine is usually caused by chronic alcohol consumption or eating polished rice. Right, and the syndrome caused by like this thiamine deficiency are uh, what? Uh, Venike's Kosakoff syndrome. Venike mm -hmm. and Kosakoff syndrome. Mm -hmm. Venico. Venike, yeah. Venike. Venike and, yeah, uh, it's, but you write as W, W E. Yeah, you know, my, the, my professor he just uh, usually call it. Venike, maybe Venike, uh, either way is one thing, right? But the first one, the first condition you need to know is berry, berry, right? Berry, berry on this time, eh? Yeah, berry, berry. So just know that uh, berry, berry, you can write it like uh, on the place, on, on the place of I, you can put one so that you can remember that is vitamin B1. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you yeah, just yeah. need to know that there are two kinds of berry berry, dry and wet. So okay. wet, wet berry berry is characterized by edema. So that one is is if it is dry, neurological symptoms. Then you are done. Neurological symptoms. For for dry berry berry, and then edema for wet berry berry. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, malaria is treated with the structure. You can see. Okay. Uh, malaria is treated with structural analogs of vitamin B2 riboflavin. The drugs disrupt the synthesis of the following enzymes in plasmodium. Right. So in the previous question, the, the previous question was uh, asking you like uh, to know the other name for B2, right? So in this case, they told you that is riboflavin. So this question requires you to know the like the, the active form of vitamin B2, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the active form is what? Uh, flavin adenine dinucleotide. Flavin. 
dye what? Flavin adenine dinucleotide. FAD. Dinucleotide. Mm. Or simply FAD like this. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it's straightforward. If you just know, like. Oh, oh flood. Like, also, that's why Flav, you, you have the hint here in Flavin. Mm, you have yeah, Flav, so fat, independent dihydrogenase. Mm. Okay. Okay. A 52 year old female patient is diagnosed with Paget disease. The concentration of uh, oxychlorine proline in daily urine is sharply increased. Which primarily, which primarily means intensified disintegration of Paget disease. Right. So, uh, Paget disease is like uh, a, a disease of bones, right? So, in bones, we have collagen one, right? Mm -hmm. So, to know that is a, it's about collagen. They told you about oh, uh, oxyproline, right? There is a stage mm -hmm. called hydroxylation of proline in synthesis of of collagen, right? So oh, okay. uh, it's, uh, it's straightforward. So if you watched the previous video, biochemistry part one, you will remember because I gave everything you need to know the whole uh, pathway for collagen synthesis, okay. right? So in this case, there is a degradation of, of, of collagen, right? So because of that, in the urine, you will find what increased contents of oxyproline. Okay. Um, cyanide is a poison that causes instant death of organism. I, what enzymes found in mitochondria are affected by cyanide? That's when I know it's and they are cytochrome. But. Yeah, it's cytochrome oxidase. Cytochrome okay. oxidase is the en enzyme uh, usually what poisoned by this cyanide, right? So it's an enzyme found in the electron transport chain. It's also known as complex four. Uh, and the other thing you you need to remember is that is uh, this this uh, enzyme called cytochrome oxidase is also uh, poisoned by carbon monoxide, right? Okay. Yeah, so just to remember this, uh, cyanide and carbon monoxide, they mm -hmm. poison this cytochrome oxidase. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's more than enough. Okay, so carbon, so it can be carbon monoxide or cyanide. All right. Yeah, so if the patient is poisoned by carbon monoxide, usually give what oxygen. oxygen. And in in case of cyanide, you you give thiosulfate drugs, thiosulfate. Oh, okay. mm. Thiosulfate drugs. All right. Increased HDL levels decrease the risk of atherosclerosis. What is the mechanical of HDL anti-atherogenic atherogenic action? Right. So this is what you need to know about the lipoproteins. Right. You have uh, different kinds. Like you have a. Uh, uh, low density lipoprotein medium mm -hmm. density lipoprotein or intermediate then you have what hdl that's high density lipoproteins and you have vldl that's very low density lipoproteins but you need to remember too vldl you need to remember hdl right high density lipoproteins and low mm -hmm. density lipoprotein right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So low density lipoprotein is uh, also known as bad cholesterol. It's the one which causes atherosclerosis. But HDL okay. in this case I indicated is uh, is anti-atherosclerosis. 
pathogenic or anti atherosclerosis are uh, right. So what is its function? LDL, it carries uh, cholesterol to the peripheral organism. Uh, no, 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 not organism, but organs. Yeah. LDL, it carries uh, what cholesterol to other organs, right? Organs which, which need cholesterol for the synthesis of hormones, for example, in adrenal glands or in gonads. Mm -hmm. Right. But HDL is the one which removes those cholesterol, excess cholesterol, uh, from peripheral organs to the what? Back to the liver. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So just know that to a mechanism. Cholesterol uh, is carried uh, like to the tissues or to the peripheral tissues by LDL, but back to the liver by HDL, oh, right? Yeah. So HDL is good cholesterol, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. and I, 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 oh, I, I, I usually mention that HDL, we, you find it if you drink a little bit of alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But not, not too much, maybe once, once per week okay. or once, two weeks right <laughs> <laughs> okay so the answer is they remove cholesterol from they tissues remove cholesterol. Yeah. Mm. the ones which supply tissues with cholesterol is LDL, L LDL. right mm -hmm. okay so ne uh, next maybe at the end of this uh presentation there is another another uh, lipoprotein, which I will tell you, it's very low density lipoprotein. Okay. Yeah, but for now, just to know HDL and LDL. LDL, best, uh, I mean, bad cholesterol. Best cholesterol. Right. Okay. It has been found out that one of the pesticides components is sodium arsenate that blocks lipoic acid which which enzyme is impaired by this pesticide mm -hmm. Right, so this is the mnemonic uh, which helps you to remember what? Uh, to remember the vitamins or the core enzymes needed by the enzyme called what? Uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, right? But first thing, if you, uh, uh, before, before we uh, go anyway, just to remember this enzyme called uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, complex, is it is like uh, same core enzymes and same structure as alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, right? So alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is found uh, like in the Krebs cycle, and pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is found in the transition stage. And I told mm -hmm. you about it: conversion mm -hmm. of what is pyruvate to acetyl. Pyruvate to acetyl core enzyme. Right. So. So these are the, en the, the core enzymes, right? T mm -hmm. for thiamine. Okay. L for lipoic acid. C is core enzyme A, that's vitamin B. F. Core enzyme A. Flavin. Yeah, core enzyme A. Mm -hmm. Like from acid to core A, right? Uh, uh, F. Is uh, flavin, right? Riboflavin, mm -hmm. vitamin B2, and mm -hmm. N is niacin or nicotine, it's vitamin B3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can just remember it this way the lovely core enzyme. Okay, you so can I'll write here my, my keyword was lipoic acid, right? Yeah, so lipoic acid, yeah, let me just. I like it here, right? Lipoic acid is one of the core enzymes needed by what? By pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay, dehydrogenase. Oh, 
called Luke's Orkham. Mm. A biochemical urine analysis has been performed for a patient with progressive muscular dystrophy. It's in the given case, muscle disease can be can be confirmed by high content of the following substance in urine. All right. Okay. So, if we talk about muscular dystrophies, the first thing. All right, first thing in, in general, you just need to know that there's a protein called dystrophin, right? Dystrophin, mm -hmm. it connects uh, like the uh, the myofibrils with the sarco, uh, it's called what? Uh, sarcoplasm, right? The, myofibril. okay, the myofibrils with the cell membrane. So you, the other name for cell membrane of, of muscle mm -hmm. is, it's called it's 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 sarcoplasm, right? Mm -hmm. So dystrophin connects these two, myofibrils and the sarcoplasm, right? So if there is a disorder or mutation in dystrophy, right? Uh, there are two forms. There is uh, okay. There are two main ones: Duchenne muscular dystrophy and another one is called Becker, right? But in both cases, you you. For this question, you don't need to remember that. For this question, you just need to remember that for diagnosis in urine is creatinine, creatine. Then uh, in muscles, creatinine. So just see, I don't know how you can remember this because okay. it, it's very easy urine to make. Urine is creatine, creatine and yeah. the muscles. Create nine. Create nine. So those when I say different as like maybe my question. Okay. Okay. I I I high content of following substance in urine. Okay. It's creating nine. Creating. Mm. Creating. Okay. Understand. A 46 year old female patient consulted a doctor about pain in the small joints of the upper and lower limbs. The joints are enlarged and shaped like thickened nodes. Serum tests revealed an increase in urate concentration. This might be caused by a disorder in the metabolism of. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, which disease is this? Urate. Uh, wait. I'm. I'm trying to. Okay. Let me indicate the first one. All right. All right. Which disease usually affect joints? Um. Uh, Rema. Okay, another hint, like those people mm -hmm. with this disease are not encouraged to eat meat too much. Um, I don't know it. Okay, it's gout, right? So oh, yeah, I, just, gout. I, I just indicated here at first so that you uh, remember the disease, right? But the the key the key word here is like increased urate in the uh, concentration or uric acid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, in degradation of uh, of purine, the end product at the end is uric acid or urate, right? Mm -hmm. So if it accumulates, then there will be gout, right? So the second thing you need to know. Uh, it's like the drug usually given to patients with gout. It's called allopurinol. 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 Like this. Okay. Allopurinol. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Right. Hello. Uh, hello, Purino. Then uh, the second thing, uh, you just need to know the enzyme which in which is inhibited by allopurino allopurino okay uh, i need to take my keyboard yeah is i think my keyboard is is sticky right okay perfect allopurino All right and the second thing you need to know about uh this gout right the second thing uh you need to know that the enzyme inhibited by allopurino is called xanthine oxidase okay enzyme inhibited by allopurino yeah okay xanthine oxidase xanthine oxidase yeah yeah uh okay let, let me take this uh because i want to add something okay All right. All right. So the drug allopurino, the enzyme, sandine oxidase, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They just need to know the mechanism. How does uh, allopurino inhibit sandine oxidase? It's through competitive inhibition. Okay. Competitive. All right. Uh, Competitive inhibition. My P, like on my key, the, my keyboard is is acting up. Right. So, uh, like, if they ask you any question about gout, now you have everything. Because, like, most of these questions, these are actually answers, the ones which I indicated here. They are answered to, they are answers to different questions. I get anything to right. you about gout. Yeah. So, uh, first thing, uh, what is uh, the, the joints which are usually affected is the uh, like the first metatarsophalangeal joint, right? Mm -hmm. First yeah. metatarsophalangeal joint, or, or they can say like the what the hallux, the the big toe, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, from the beginning, uh, degradation of purines leads to. Uh, Increase the concentration of uric acid or urate, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the symptoms like uh, thickened joints, etc. Right? The drug which you gave allopurino, the enzyme targeted xanthine oxidate, oxidase, uh, and um, the mechanism competitive inhibition, and the most affected. Uh, joint is first metatarsophalangeal joint can you write the name of the the joint <laughs> okay uh, they usually tell you in the oh, in the first okay. in the question i mean okay mm. but in just okay first Meta tasso. Okay. 
We estimate that as of a lunch joint. Also known as the hallux, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so if you just remember this thing, okay, you are ready to go for gout. Okay, so we will see other questions like this and I will remind you. Uh, human red blood cells do not contain mitochondria. What is the main pathology for ATP production in those cells? They don't contain mitochondria. I'm not good. Uh huh. Okay. So, okay. Here is what happens. All right. So, uh, the first thing you need to know: what happens in the mitochondria? There's production of energy. Uh, I mean, like, oh. um. which process take place in the mitochondria? Biochemistry, can you go a little bit deep so that we can understand what's really happening here? Okay, uh, can you remind me the fate of pyruvate? We we talked about conversion of pyruvate into what? Into acid to co A, okay, right? Okay, pyruvate. Okay, pyruvate is used to like on that uh, process before Krebs cycle. It is, um, re is it reduction? Oh, wait. Could you use a pyruvate? You know, so I don't know what certain like I know. Just okay. then you see pass coenzyme A. Okay, just say conversion of uh pyruvate. Pyruvate is three carbon. It will be converted to acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is two carbons. Right, okay. and the enzyme there is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. But there is something I told you about that process. I say it, it only happens in the presence of what? Of oxygen, and it okay. occurs in the mitochondria. Right, so in this case, you are being told that the uh, red blood cells they do not contain mitochondria. It means that process which happens in the RBC is in the absence of oxygen. Okay. Exactly. So this will help you to rule out anything which in, which includes which includes what uh, oxygen, right? So the process is glycolysis, uh, but in presence of mitochondria, it's it's only anaerobic, right? Not aerobic. In presence of or absence. In absence of oxygen. It's only anaerobic glycolysis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Do you know the process of uh, glycolysis, the whole uh, 10 steps? No. Mm, you didn't watch the video. You need to uh, look for the video. I explained uh, glycolysis and I said this process is anaerobic. Mm. Mm hmm. So, uh, like a presence or absence of oxygen in uh, as far as the um, the fate of pyruvate is concerned, that's where we will need to know whether there is oxygen or there is what? There is uh, no oxygen, right? So, usually if there is no oxygen, it's converted to lactic acid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we will see other questions like that. Um, this, those organisms which, can I read? Mm -hmm. Those organisms which in the process of, those organisms which in the process of evolution failed to develop pro protection from hydrogen peroxide can exist only in anaerobic conditions. Which of the following enzymes can break uh, can break hydrogen peroxide catalyst. <laughs> exactly, you know catalyst, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everyone knows this one. And then the other bonus here, peroxide peroxidase. Okay. So it's catalase and peroxidase. Peroxidase. Mm. Prolonged fasting cause hypoglycemia, which is amplified by alcohol consumption, as the following process is inhibited. Mm -hmm. uh, gluco gluconeogenesis. Okay, so this patient is what is hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. All right. It means like there is what a low level of glucose in glucose, blood, yes. and, I, mm -hmm. and and it's being it's being amplified by what by alcohol consumption, right? Mm -hmm. So here is what you need to know, right? Uh, the process of gluconeogenesis takes place in the liver, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if there is a uh, you know, like like the the general the general pathway of um of, of ethanol metabolism is uh it needs to it it leads to production of uh NADH right NADH is uh used for like fat acid synthesis and also these uh, uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate formed there is it can be converted into glycerol three phosphate and then you know uh, fatty acids plus glycerol yeah. is, they form more triglycerides leading to, to liver damage etc right mm -hmm. so in the, mm -hmm. the liver is the only organism where gluconeogenesis take place That's so right. if it is damaged then gluconeogenesis will not happen. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's amplified by the alcohol consumption and the alcohol consumption. Okay. Okay. I think they by the ship, like before, part, someone explained about the liver. One bottle of genius oil, move our cholesterol to the liver, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> okay. Next question. A 39 year old female patient with a history of diabetes was hospitalized in a pre comatose state of diabetic ketoacidosis. The condition had been caused by an increase in the following metabolite level Keto, ketone bodies, ketoacidosis. All right. Diabetes So in in diabetes, in diabetes, yeah, like there is what there is uh, metabolism of uh like uh, ketone bodies, right? Yeah. So this whole question, okay, let's just focus here. This whole question is asking you to point out the ketone bodies. All right. Mm-hmm. The so, ketone bodies. Right. So uh the ketone bodies, uh the first one is one here called acetoacetate. Right. So the the pathway begins like in the following way, right? Uh mm -hmm. there is uh like acid acid to co A combines with acid to co A to form uh acetoacid to co A, right? And then that one will be acted upon by uh hmg co a at the end you have what you have uh uh ketone bodies the first one is called uh beta hydroxybutyric acid that's the first one okay so let me just do this beta hydrox butyric Acid, right? Uh, and another one is called what? Acetone, right? Because acetoacetate is can go undergo like um, uh, what do you call 
like uh, is a spontaneous decarboxylation acetone. All right. So these are the ketone bodies which you need to know. Okay. All right. So people with uh, people who are utilizing ketone bodies, they have a specific uh, smell. Now it's called acetones, acetone breath. I'm mm -hmm. sure. I'm sure you know it. If you fast for a long time, you can uh, smell it. Mm -hmm. As acetone breath. Okay. You you just don't know its name, but I'm sure you know that smell if you <laughs> come across <laughs> acetone breath. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the ketone bodies, acetoacetated, beta hydroxybutyric acid, and acetone, right? Mm -hmm. A patient with um homoge homo dentistria is signs of arthritis or or chronosis. In this case, the pain in the joint is associated with the deposition of All right, so this question is talking about what hemogentesuria. Right, signs mm -hmm. of arthritis, acro, acrosis. Uh, okay, there is something. Okay. All right. So this the 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 answer is in the question. Right, homogeneous urea. Right, homogeneous. Uh, all right. So there is an a, a pathway for formation of uh catecholamines. That whole pathway. I'm sure I I explained it in the first video, right? In biochemistry mm -hmm. part one, right? Is it begins with phenylalanine? Phenylalanine. Not PK. Phenylalanine. Yeah. Okay. So in the presence of phenylalanine hydroxylase, phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine. Tyrosine. Yeah. Right. So tyrosine has different pathways. It can go to form like uh, like DOPA, and then from DOPA it can uh, be converted like uh, uh, DOPA is converted to melanin by tyrosinase, right? Well, melanin is the pigment, right? The yeah. pig, uh, skin pigment, right? Mm -hmm. But tyrosine can be uh, converted to to homogeneous right? Okay. And then homogeneous uh can be like can be acted upon by an enzyme called homogeneous oxidase. Homogeneous oxidase. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the presence of that enzyme, there is accumulation of this homogeneous. So it can accumulate uh, in the skin, in the like uh, connective tissues. Uh, like the limbs can turn blue, the sclera can turn uh, blue, and also if this uh, if this substance hem hemogenesis is in urine, and if you leave it uh, for uh, uh, for some time, it can be oxidated, turning the color of urine to dark black right so the whole disease is called I have seen question I told about kuta like during routine change it black yeah so the disease is called what alcaptorurea yeah 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 alcaptorurea alcaptorurea okay so we will we'll see it again but for this question you have mm -hmm. the answer in the question you don't need to think too much okay <laughs> Okay. In case of alcaptorurea, hemogenistic acid is secreted in urine in large amounts. The development of this disease is associated with a disorder of metabolism of the following amino acids. Tyroxine. Okay, why not why not phenylalanine? Right. So I said at, at the beginning, phenylalanine 
is converted mm -hmm. into tyrosine. Tyrosine. Right. So oh, this okay. tyrosine is the one which will be converted into what homogeneous acid. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So you are cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Patient with a atropoietic um, porphyria, uh, gundas, gunda, gunda disease, or whatever. Okay. We can see that uh, fluorescent with bright red color when subjected to ultraviolet radiation. Their skin is light sensitive, urine is red colored. What enzyme can cause the disease when it is indeficient? All right. Okay, so your first keyword is this disease known as erythropoietic porphyria. All right, so this one, it happens like in the process of uh, synthesis of him. Right, so it's a very mm -hmm. large pathway, but you just need to know, uh, uh, firstly, the enzyme which is usually deficient is called erythro, uh, no, it's called europoferinogen pre-synthesis. Europoferinogen 3 synthase. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the substance which is accumulating in the skin, which is causing this uh, photosensitivity, is mm -hmm. called Europoferinogen 1. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you just need to remember that. Not, not, this one is actually an enzyme, but it's useless. The one, the substance which accumulates is europoferinogen 1. And the enzyme which is deficient is europoferinogen 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So one is the substance and then three is the enzyme. Exactly. Okay. Mm, one is the substance which accumulate causing that photosensitivity. Photosensitivity. Okay. Symptoms of pelagram vitamin PP deficient is particularly pronounced in patients with low protein diet because nicotinamide precursor in humans is one of the essential amino acid, namely tryptophan. Uh, in this case, they gave you more than enough, more than enough information to answer this question. So you mm. just need to know, uh, okay, in the uh, vitamin B3 video, I talked about this, I talked about this, um, the source of, of, of uh, vitamin B3, right? I said it's the amino acid, a neutral amino acid known as tryptophan, right? Mm. So uh, just to know that uh, it also gives serotonin, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Serotonin. Right, so one more time. Tryptophan gives uh, nicotinamide and serotonin, right? It's usually uh, deficient. I mean, uh, vitamin B3 or nicotin, nicotinamide or nicotine is usually deficient, uh, like in patients with uh, Hartnup's disease, right? Uh, I don't know the spelling. Okay, let me see. Hartnup. Let me see. Uh, wait, can you see my keyboard on the screen? Because I don't know. No, I cannot okay. see it. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. I turn up. Uh, I'm not sure about the spelling. Let me just check it so that I can type correct things. All right. All right, okay. Hot nap, it is like this. 
exactly heart nap disease right so this uh this disease usually okay if uh, a patient you have like a uh, deficient in transporters of what of uh tryptophan in the kidneys or in the intestines right mm -hmm. uh this def uh, deficiency again of tryptophan is also caused by uh carcinoid syndrome carcinoid right so this in this case uh like uh this is where like for example uh, serotonin is produced by like uh, neuroendocrine uh, neuroendocrine cells for example in the uh, GIT right so so as I said tryptophan it gives off what serotonin and mm -hmm. uh, niacin right so if the pathway goes more to serotonin it means there will be less nicotinamide there will be less what uh, vitamin b3 okay okay uh, oh, uh, one more time this uh, this patient is pellagra right so pellagra is the uh, main disease caused by deficiency of niacin right and i said the precursor of niacin is called tryptophan it's a neutral uh, it's a neutral amino acid and i said the other thing which comes from tryptophan is serotonin right and I said uh, deficiency of nicotine uh, of uh, nicotine or niacin is caused uh, by ATNAP disease, right? If there is deficiency of nicotine, yeah, or ni nicotinic acid or niacin or vitamin B3, it's just the same thing. Mm -hmm. Niacin, nicotinic acid, vitamin B3, right? Mm -hmm. So ATNAP disease there is uh, no absorption of this tryptophan in the kidneys and in the what in the intestines this means uh, nicot nicotinic acid will be low okay. and also serotonin as i said right the second condition which i mentioned is what carcinoid syndrome carcinoid right syndrome. so carcinoid syndrome is where like this serotonin is being produced by neuroendocrine cells for for example in the GIT right so if the uh like if the reaction is producing more serotonin it means there will be less tryptophan uh to be converted to nicotinic acid therefore there is deficiency of nicotinic acid or niacin or vitamin okay. b3 okay. okay a newborn a newborn baby has numerous hemorrhages blood coagulation tests reveal increased thrombo thrombin time the mm -hmm. child Red. is most likely to have disorder of the following biochemical process. Numerous hemorrhages, that's bleeding, blood coagulation test reviewed, increased thrombin, thrombin time. The child is most likely to have disorders of the following. Okay. I'm done. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so you are being told by what? Uh, you are being told that this uh, there is an uh, increased problem in time. So these are the disorders of what? Of coagulation. Right? Coagulation, yeah. Uh, right. So in newborns, the first thing you need to know is like uh, they have low vitamin K, right? And a uh, low vitamin K is needed for uh, like like by uh, clotting factors for production of what? Gamma carboxyglutamic acid, right? Okay, so the whole process is called what? Uh, uh, gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid, right? 
But what you need to know is that this condition is being caused by deficiency of vitamin K, number one. Number two, you just need to know uh, clotting factors, which are vitamin K dependent, right? So the mnemonic is here. Two plus seven is equal to nine, not ten. Why? It means. Hmm? Okay. I'm yeah, <laughs> it's correct. Okay, so factor two, factor seven, factor nine, and factor ten are the ones which uses which need vitamin K. Okay, factor mm -hmm. factor mm. two, factor seven, factor nine. Is that what she said? Hmm. Uh, uh, can you see what uh, what's on the screen? Like what I wrote. Two plus two plus seven is equal to nine, not ten. Yeah. It's just a simple mnemonic to remember the four clotting so factors. all these are factors? Yeah, clotting factors. Okay, it repeats our total factor two, factor seven. Oh, factor two, factor seven, factor nine, and factor ten. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Uh, oh, so this not, it's not like, like uh, uh, it does not mean factor 10 doesn't use. Yeah, no, it's just for the whole sentence to make sense. But all these numbers, all these clotting factors, they need vitamin K. Okay. Mm. So I said the uh, the process is called what? Gamma carboxylation, gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid. Okay, gamma carboxylation. Mm -hmm. Gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid. Mm. And to be more specific, uh, vitamin K is actually a, K, a coenzyme for epoxide reductase. But I talked about it in the uh, first video, which I'm always mentioning. But uh, I haven't seen any question which asks about that one to be more specific. But knowing the factors and then uh, just knowing the production of uh, gamma carboxyl uh, gamma carboxyl glutamate and knowing that in newborns they don't have what uh, normal flora which synthesizes vitamin K. Okay. Mm. So it's usually like a postnatal is uh, a vitamin, uh, like newborns are given in inframuscular uh, vitamin K injection. Okay. Uh, steatosis is caused by the accumulation of triglycerols in hepatocytes. One of the mechanisms of this disease development is a decrease in utilization of very VLDL neutrophate. What lipotropics prevent the development of this of steatosis? Accumulation of the phase and one of the mechanisms decrease development is a decrease in okay of which you say it okay okay let me explain about trading okay so uh how do i explain this all right so uh uh, steatosis, this one is like a uh, presence of what of, of, of fats, right? It's caused by accumulation of triglycerides in the hepatocyte. What is the mechanism of disease development? No, no, no. One of the mechanism of this development is decrease in utilization of VLDL neutral fat, right? So VLDL uh, is another um, uh, lipoprotein, right? What? Tropics prevents development of uh, all right. So here the answer is methionine, vitamin B6, the spiridoxin, and vitamin B12, that the cyanocobalamin, right? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, you need to cram this question because I'm trying to find and the way for you to remember <laughs> this question, <laughs> but I have none. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let it's me. Not like it's my meteor nine and B six, B twelve. Yeah, yeah. All right. So in in, in general, okay, okay. You can just remember this this one. Um. Like uh, the very long chain, very long chain fatty acids and odd chain fatty acids in some branched amino acid. Those ones they are converted to what to. All right. Okay. 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 I I found another another thing to uh, to remind you. Just know methionine, right? So in protein synthesis. Methionine is the first amino acid. You get it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So just to know that in in synthesis of lipoproteins, lipoproteins just uh, like uh, proteins with uh, lipids, right? So mm -hmm. lipoprotein, the, the first one, the first uh, codon, it calls for methionine. Methionine. Mm, yeah, maybe you can remember it that way. You don't need to think too much on this one because. I don't want to lie. <laughs> oh, okay. exactly. exactly. So if there is someone who can explain the whole pathway here, we are still learning. Yeah. So we will see maybe in the comment section, right? Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Decarboxylation of glutamate induces production of gamma. Amino butyric acid GABA neurotransmitter. After breakdown, GABA is converted into metabolite of citric acid. That is All right. So uh, th this is the thing, right? Glutamate glutamate is actually an amino acid, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, previously, I said like there are some amino acids, uh, like uh, like their pathway, they lead to formation of uh, methylmalonyl CoA, right? Methylmalonyl CoA can uh, be easily converted to intermediates of tricarboxylic acid, right? Uh, specifically in the presence of what? Uh, in the presence of vitamin B12. Right, so it's converted to succinate, and succinate can be shunted into the tricarboxylic acid. Right. Mm. Mm. So how do you remember this one again? Uh, metabolite of citric acid cycle. Or oh, and the thing is like, uh, uh, all of these are actually metabolites of uh, of citric acid cycle right mm -hmm. but okay so the easiest way to remember just to uh, remember uh, just remember the uh, different amino acids which leads to formation of methylmalonyl coa and then methylmalonyl coa uh, can be uh, converted into what into succinate and then succinate mm -hmm. is shunted to tricarboxylic acids cycle Okay. Um, a child has used three of hepato hepatomegaly hypoglycemia seizures, especially on the empty stomach and in stressful situations. The child is diagnosed with a uh, Greek disease. This disease is caused by the genetic defect of the following enzyme all right so this here, here is the thing right you are, you in, in this question you are being told that uh okay so the full name is, is von geek okay they it wasn't there in the question i'm just adding right von geek's disease is the full name 
right okay. so this is what happens in general uh, in the in the muscles you have uh your glycogen right mm -hmm. in the, yeah it's all, also in the liver but for now let's focus in the muscle because i want to go somewhere right okay. so uh by uh glycogenolysis breaking down of glycogen we form glucose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate right and the first enzyme which we use for uh glycogenolysis is called a glucogen uh, glycogen it's called what? glycogen phosphate glycogen phosphorylase okay yeah this one so it's the the first enzyme which we use uh, to convert for glycogenolysis, right? But it gives off, it doesn't give like glucose directly. It gives glucose 6-phosphate, like a lot of them, right? So glucose 6-phosphate, uh, it we need to remove the phosphate in the 6th carbon, right? So it doesn't happen like uh, in uh, like e everywhere. It's only only happen like uh, in the liver because in the liver uh, we have organelles known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Those mm -hmm. uh, in those uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulums they contain the enzyme called what glucose six phosphatase for cleaving or removing this phosphate on the sixth carbon, right? And if it is deficient, the uh, the disease is known as what is uh, the disease is known as uh, von Gieke's disease, right? So you check later if you see, if you check in the chart, there is uh, a picture showing like uh, this uh, glycogen storage diseases, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so glucose six phosphatase, I said, is found in the liver. And what is also found in the uh, proximal tubules of the kidney. Phosphate is mm. liver and uh, proximal organ. Mm. Glucose six phosphatase. Glucose six phosphatase. That's the answer here. Now, now I want to I want to look for something so that I can uh, remind you like some of the easiest ones here. Um, just a moment. All right, perfect. So for the glucose six phosphatase, we said it's is von Gieke's disease, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For this amyloid one six glucosidase, right? Uh, the the disease is or you, is known as Cori's disease. Wait. Uh, let me do this. Cori's. Cori's disease. Cori's disease. Okay. Right. So uh, this one is it, it mainly affects the heart. Okay. Chorus disease. Uh, right. And then mm -hmm. uh, glycogen phosphorylase. So glycogen phosphorylase. Uh, so in the beginning of this question, I told you to focus on the muscles, right? So mm -hmm. deficiency of this this enzyme is found both in the liver and in the muscles, mm -hmm. right? So if we talk about uh, the the muscles, the disease is called Mac Adler's disease. Mac what? Mm. Okay, McAdley's disease. And uh, if it is deficient in the liver, it's called Hare's disease. There is a, a, a method to remember this. Don't worry, I will show you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes, yes. All right. So this is the thing. Uh, Mark Adley's M for muscles. So okay. glycogen is for a less deficient in the muscles cause Mark Adley's disease. Right. In the liver, the other name for liver is HEPA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's disease in the what? In the liver. Deficiency in the liver. Okay. Mm. Um, then there is another one. There is another one. Uh, to, to, to be more specific, because like uh, this chorus disease, uh, I, I mentioned heart here. Uh, I should not do that because it mainly affects uh, like muscles and liver and then heart. Right? So muscles and liver. So I, sh I should not tell you like the main organ affected by this one. Right. But they, there is another one, another enzyme called a uh, one four. Right. One four. It causes pompous disease. Right. Mm. Uh, so this one I need to write it. All right. Uh, it's called what? Alpha one four glucosidase. Alpha one four glucosidase. Mm, okay, just to write the full name, but here because of my P, I don't know, it's a problem. Okay, yeah. one four glucosidase. Mm -hmm. Right. So this one, it causes pompous disease. <laughs> there is no, okay, let me just type. Alpha one four, right? And the mm -hmm. disease is called what? Right, so it's called pompous disease. It's actually it's in actually in a lysosomal lysosomal storage disease. Right. So uh, one more time, von Geke. It mm. usually affects what uh, if you talk about the organs, it usually affects liver and kidney because I said glucose six phosphatase is found in the liver and kidney, right? So you mm -hmm. can just remember it that way, right? Uh, the, then pompous, this one, alpha-1,4 glucosidase, it affects mm -hmm. like all organs, but main, the main one is the heart. Then uh, chorus disease, it affects uh, muscles and liver. Okay, then going to glycogen phosphorylase, you can see here because uh, uh, it's M macadlis, it affects the muscles because the mm -hmm. enzyme is found in the muscles, right? And also mm -hmm. it affects the liver if there is deficiency in the liver, right? Yeah. Okay, right. But your focus. Because uh, 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 the most common ones, the most common ones which they ask, pompous disease, you just need to know. Alpha 1 for pompous disease, heart. And then this one, uh, glucose 6 phosphatase, von Giges mm -hmm. disease. Yeah, that's your number one and number two. And also knowing that glycogen phosphorylase is found in the muscles and the heart. And so the heart. It will be, yeah, porous disease. Is here and there, but okay. In cancer patient, in cancer patient who have been continuously receiving methotrexate, methotrexate, the target cells of the tumor with time become insensitive to the drug. In this case, gene amplification of the following enzyme is observed. I just wanted to do this. 
All right. So again, I I I, I presented uh, uh, this uh, method trick set. All right. So this method trick set uh, is actually a drug uh, which usually which is usually used in cancer patients. Right. So in cancer, there is like uh, uncontrolled cell. So the at the molecular level, it's all about DNA and in, 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 in nucleotide synthesis, right? So mm -hmm. like that whole process, there is an enzyme known as um, thiamidylate synthesis, mm -hmm. right? Thiamidylate synthesis, it uses uh, tetrahydrofolate, right? So, so tetrahydrofolate is uh, uh, after acting upon on that uh, reaction, it is converted to to dihydrofolate, right? So, but we need to convert it back to tetrahydrofolate so that the process will con. Right. One more time, thiamidylate synthesis. It needs tetrahydrofolate, right? So after acting, the tetrahydrofolate will be converted to uh, dihydrofolate. But to convert dihydrofolate back to tetrahydrofolate, that's why we need uh, dihydrofolate reductase. You get it? Dihydrofolate reductase. It converts the what? Uh, uh, dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. And then the process will continue there, right? Methotrexate is the drug which inhibits dihydrofolate reductase. So if you inhibit, you are actually like uh, reducing like uh, uh, synthesis of uh, DNA, right? Thereby uh, like um, reducing like this uh, uh, growth of the tumor. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, pancreas is known as a mixed gland, endocrine. Wait, human. Okay, I'm here. Okay, pancreas is known as a mixed gland. Endocrine function include production of insulin by beta cells. This hormone affects uh, the metabolism of carbohydrates. What is its effect upon the activity of activity of glycogen phosphorylase, uh, GP, and glycogen synthetase GF? Okay, so uh, you, I, I want you to understand this one. Right. So firstly, insulin, right? Insulin is produced by beta cells, right? There is another hormone which is produced by uh, the pancreas. It's called glucagon. glucagon. Uh, it's, produced by, it's produced by alpha cells, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can remember it that way. Uh, glucagon is produced when glucose is gone. Yeah. It means insulin is produced if glucose is very high in blood. High, yeah. Right. So insulin, it uh like uh it stimulates the uptake of glucose from blood into the cells. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm-hmm. Exactly right. So after understanding that part, then you are ready to go. You need to know that if insulin is is, is high, if carb, if glucose is high, insulin mm -hmm. uh, can also uh, stimulate the uh, synthesis of glycogen because glucose is high. We want to store it. You get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the enzyme. Uh, for synthesis of glycogen is called glycogen synthesis. Okay. So 
uh, in conclusion, we can say insulin activate glycogen synthase. You get it? Insulin. Mm -hmm. Con glycogen synthase. Yeah, it activate glycogen synthase. Right, let's talk about glucagon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so glucagon, I say like this one is uh, when glucose is gone. It means there is very low uh, concentration of glucose. Of glucose in the blood, right? In the blood. So what do you need to do? You need to convert gluco, gl uh, glycogen into glucose. Glycogen glucose, into glucose yes. So the process is known as what? Glycogenesis. And the enzyme which we use. Firstly, I told you, I, I, I told you this enzyme. Glycogen synthetase. Uh, it's called yeah. glycogen phosphorylase. Phosphorylase. Yeah. yeah. So phosphorylase is the one which is activated by glucagon. Then glycogen synthase is activated by, uh, by insulin. Right. So when, if we combine uh, the effects of uh, like uh, these two hormones on these two enzymes. It's like uh, one hormone inhibits one enzyme and blocks another. Mm -hmm. For example, insulin, it activates uh, yes. uh, glycogen synthase and he inhibits it's the glycogen okay. phosphorylase. Okay. Then glucagon does the opposite one, right? So I understand now. That's why A is the answer, right? Mm -hmm. So gluca glucagon, it affects the GP glycogen uh, phosphorylase, and then insulin activates the glycogen synthase. Yeah. So that that's it, right? So insulin is activating what glycogen. Okay. So about keywords, Ningel, too, like it's about the insulin, so. You know, yeah. Then, all right. Yeah, you just need to know the uh, action of insulin on these two enzymes. Yeah, for glucagon, I just told you so that you uh, understand if they ask you that way. They can just yeah. change only this part. They can say uh, uh, glucagon by alpha cells. Mm -hmm. mm, you will see it as a new question. Right. Okay. Perfect. So that's uh, 2000 and what? That was 2014. Okay. Right. So now we'll talk about 2015, but I'm sure we can. We are starting something in 10 minutes, right? In 10 minutes. All right. Fine. Yeah. So we will continue. All right. Thank you. No problem. All right. No one to talk to when. Okay, cool. All right. Bye.